Kaplan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's lesson is an all-in-one lesson. It involves movements for the hips, for the pelvis, for the spine, for the arms and the chest. I hope you will enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed both doing and teaching it here, here in Rutland. Please begin by lying down on your back. And just take a moment to notice, first of all, the overall contact that you feel into the floor. And then begin just by um, tracing in your mind's eye the line of your spine down from where you make contact on the, on the back of the head. Just follow the line of the cervical or neck spine as it moves, as the spine moves down towards the pelvis. And just notice the overall length of the curve of the cervical spine and its depth at, it, at the highest point. And then begin to follow the parts of the spine that you that next sense that actually are in contact with the floor. So um, the area between the shoulder blades. And then begin to discover the next point where the spine begins to leave the floor. Um, for many people, that will be higher up, depending on how much holding there is in the, in the back muscles. But for other people, it will be lower down. And just notice again the curve of the lumbar spine, the length of the curve of the lumbar spine and its depth at its highest point. Again, if, you're, if you tend to be a bit arched, then of course the depth of that curve will be higher and its length will be higher too. And then once you've considered the, the sweep of the spine and the curves of the spine, just project the line beyond your tailbone or pubic bone towards the end of the mat and just get a sense of how you're organised around that centre line. Uh, some people will feel as though they're rolling off the line a little bit to one side compared to the other. So just get a, a sense of how you're lying. And then please bring your legs to standing. Now, uh, imagine once you've brought the legs to standing again that you are lying on a clock. And this clock is painted on the back of your pants. And 12 o'clock is towards the head. And 6 o'clock is towards the feet. Begin by pressing both feet down into the floor to roll the pelvis to 12 o'clock towards the head. And then you can think of the feet becoming super light to help you arch the lower back and go towards six o'clock. So you press down into both feet evenly to go to 12 o'clock. And just notice how the lower back comes flatter to the floor at 12 o'clock. And when you go to six o'clock, you think of the feet becoming light uh, to, go to, to go to six o'clock and arch the lower back. And just notice as you're doing this, is it, do you tend to favour one foot slightly earlier in time compared to the other? Uh, another question maybe to ask is whether you are actually using the whole of the foot to press into or whether, as sometimes happens, you're actually just pressing into the little toe side of the feet. So, just notice what it is you're doing and see if you can then just begin to use the feet a little bit more evenly to help you make this movement with the pelvis. Now, um, once you've done that a few times, begin to recruit more actively your abdominals. So, I like to think of a spot two inches below the navel, so, but it's really two inches below the navel towards the pubic bone. I think of pulling that area back towards the upper part of the sacrum or towards the lower back and that helps me to go to 12 o'clock and I think of pushing that area out to really help me arch the lower back. So you can combine these two methods of using the feet and the abdominals and back muscles to make these movements. And, and once you've done it a few times, just pause in the middle. And then on our clock, if we make the right hip three o'clock and the left hip nine o'clock, 
could you roll the pelvis a little bit to the right to three o'clock and then towards nine o'clock towards the, the left. So again, one way of doing this is to try is to tilt the knees left and right. But if possible, could you instead keep the knees more or less looking towards the ceiling? So you're just rolling, and I and really I can't stress the word rolling enough, so I'm not trying to lift actively uh, the the side of the pelvis. So I'm rolling the pelvis from side to side. And each time I press, it, so I can press into the left foot to help me roll to the right, and into the right foot to help me roll to the, to the left, just to go from side to side. And then pause in the middle, and then go once more to 12 o'clock. So I press into the feet, lower tummy in, and in terms of our clock, could you go round to one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, so down to the right, and then think of coming back to two, one, and twelve, and go round to eleven, ten, and nine o'clock, to down to the left. Uh, I'm introducing these movements now because I think you'll find it very helpful for parts of the lesson to come. So just see if you can go round these hours of the clock from 12 to 1, 2, 3, and back to 2, 1, 12, and then round to 11, 10, and 9. And then go, just go back around these particular hours of the clock a few times. Just see if you become familiar with the what this does to the lower back. So one side of the lower back as I go round to the left towards 11, 10 and 9, it's the lower back on the left hand side that's close to the floor and then when I return to 12 and go to 1, 2 and 3, the lower back on the right hand side is closer to the floor. And then please leave that alone and then lengthen your right leg, right leg. And once you've lengthened the right leg, begin to do a movement. It's an instruction I often give in class of pressing down into the left foot to roll the pelvis to the right and then come back. So you, first of all, just try to press into the left foot to roll the pelvis to the right and try to keep the left knee looking towards the ceiling. So, to help you do that, I can tell you if you put the left foot too close to the right leg, it won't nearly be as effective as if you take it a little bit out to the side. But see if you can discover the best place yourself to where to put that left foot, so that you can solidly press into the foot, keep the knee looking towards the ceiling, to roll the pelvis, to the right and then you let it come back. Now one thing that quite commonly happens is uh, in class is that students will just press into the foot a little bit and then they'll try and contract the back muscles to push their pelvis over to the left which is a way of doing it but, but really what we're trying to do is weight transfer transfer the movement through the spine. So see if you can think of pushing into the foot. You wait for the movement to go into the knee. It moves down into the hip joint. And then think of directing the movement, not just to the right, but in terms of our clock, it would be to one o'clock, two o'clock, that area, so that you're sending the movement more to the ribs on the right hand side and towards the right shoulder. So just see if you can find that, the push into the foot travels to the knee, flows down into the hip joint, and then you may need to just add a little bit of abdominal um, work to make sure the movement is bringing the lower back on the right hand side down into the floor. And then pause and try that with the other, other leg. So right leg standing, left leg long. 
Again, just think about where you've placed the right foot and see if you can begin to press into the right foot to roll the pelvis to the left, but of course not just straight to the left, you're aiming the movement so it, the weight transfer goes through the lower back on the left hand side, aiming it towards the ribs on the left and towards that left shoulder and then you let the pelvis come back down, let go of the effort and then start again. So as I tell my students, you, it's good to think of each movement not as so much as an exploration, but as a question. You're always looking to see, oh, can I make this easy? Can I do it with the least effort possible without any parasitic movements in the jaw or in the hands? Uh, and then pause, leave it alone and take a rest for a moment. And then once the legs are long, just roll their head and eyes very, very lazily from one side to the other, just to see how that is the, today. And then come to centre and please bring both legs to standing. And then interlace your fingers, so you interlace them the, to the roots of the fingers. And then turn your, I'm just going to move down a little bit, turn your palms away from you and then bring your hands overhead if possible, so towards the floor overhead. And start with bent arms, but then just see, can you extend the arms away from you overhead and then bend the arms? So you're just exploring, can you extend the arms and bend them? You might find that one arm is extending more easily than the others and uh, just exploring uh, how it is to lengthen the arms in this way overhead. And once you've done a few movements, bring the hands back over to the chest and then just change the interlace of the fingers so the other index finger comes on top. If you're not used to doing that, if you always go for the habitual interlace, it will feel quite strange and possibly a little bit uncomfortable but if you bear with it it will become much more much more um, accessible to you and uh, bring the hands overhead again and then once more just try to extend the arms and bend the arms with this interlace and just notice what happens to your back as you do this do you tend to lift the back off the floor to try and extend the arms uh, and maybe just ask, do you need to do, to do that? Can you keep the back fairly heavy into the floor as you bend and extend the arms? Now, pause, please leave that alone and just rest for a moment with the legs long and then just roll the head and eyes a little bit from left to right. And then come back to centre Bring your legs back to standing and then tilt your right knee out to the side. So I'll just show you that with the left leg because that's closest to the camera. You just allow the knee to tilt out to the side so that you come to rest on the little toe side of the foot. So um, you tilt the right knee out to the side and you'll notice as the knee tilts, the pelvis rolls a little bit to the right hand side. So I can feel space now underneath the left side of my, of my pelvis. And then see, can you bring the left foot to rest on the right lower leg? Somewhere close to the knee, the right knee, but not on the knee, don't press the foot into the knee. So somewhere on the left, on the right lower leg. Uh, now, some of my students in class, when I've taught this, find this a challenging. So one option is to have the left foot on the floor. But if you can, try and keep it on the right lower leg. And then try to 
press gently into the left foot to roll the pelvis a little bit towards the right. So I gently press into the left foot to roll the pelvis a little bit to the right. And as you're pressing into the left foot, try again to keep the knee pointing or looking towards the ceiling so that it's not going to the outside or to the inside. Just try pressing into the left foot to roll the pelvis a little bit to the, to the right. And um, think of the left thigh lengthening towards the left knee and you get this lovely lovely opening in the hip joint if you can do that thinking of the knee staying towards the ceiling the thigh lengthening away from you Good. and then pause carefully bring the legs back to center let them go long for a moment just to rest for a second and then please bring the legs back to standing and this time allow the left knee to drift out to the side and bring the right foot to stand on the lower leg somewhere close to the knee if possible but not on the knee, not on the knee. And begin to gently press into the right foot so as to roll the pelvis to the left and as some of you have probably anticipated it's not just to the left so again you don't want to contract the back muscles to try and push the pelvis over to the left so you need to think possibly of pulling in the tummy pulling in the tummy so that the right side of the pelvis it's not just going to the left it's actually I'm thinking of an arc, an arc going to, so it's more towards these ribs underneath the armpit on the left hand side and towards this left, left shoulder. So just see if you can keep the knee looking towards the ceiling, sense of the thigh lengthening away from you and then pause, carefully come back to centre and just let the legs go long for a second. It's got some fascinating variations in it, this, this lesson, as, as we'll discover together. Now, please bend the knees, um, but not as much as you might do normally. So, um, have the feet a little bit further away from you. And then interlace the hands once more and then turn the palms away from you and bring the hands over overhead again. And now lift the front of the feet, so I'm just on the heels, and then press the heels down into the floor. And you'll feel as you do that, again, it causes the lower back to come very close to the floor, if not actually on the floor. And, I, and you can perhaps feel as you get used to that, it creates a push going through the spine. Can you, you can see how the position of my head is affected by the, the push through the feet. So with your interlaced hands overhead on the floor, as you create that push, can you extend the arms? And then as you release the push, you bend the arms. So you push into the feet to extend the arms and you, as you release the effort in the feet, you bend the arms. Just see what that's like to do. Does it make the arms extend more easily? And then once you've just done a few of those, then change the interlace of the hands to your perhaps less familiar interlace. Turn the palms away, bring the hands overhead again and once more push through the heels to bring the lower back towards the floor so you create a push through the spine to extend the up to help you extend the arms just do that a few times checking you're not holding the breath or clenching clenching the jaw and then pause leave it alone and take a rest for a moment 
and then when you rest, just roll, ask this question, what's it like for me now to roll the head a little bit from side to side? And then come to centre, bring both legs back to standing. Once again, allow your right knee to drift out to the side. And then bring your left foot to rest on the right lower leg again. Somewhere near to the knee if possible, but not on the knee. Interlace the hands once more, bring them over the head, and you start with bent arms. And then could you again gently, can't stress that enough, so without lots of power, press into the left foot, thinking of pulling in the tummy. So you're trying to, in terms of our clock again, it's two o'clock, one o'clock in particular. So you create this push, thinking of the knee staying towards the ceiling, the thigh lengthening away from you as you extend the arms. So you push gently into the foot, pull in the tummy, extend the arms. And what I can feel as I create this push is that the push is, is definitely more into my ribs on the right hand side towards that right shoulder, that right scapula, as if it's giving a little push to that right scapula to help me lengthen the right arm. And then um, pause, change the interlace to your other interlace, bring the hands overhead again, and then again see what it's like to push, pull in the tummy as you extend the arms. Can you, can you feel the ribs on the right hand side being affected, being affected by this movement? Good. And then pause carefully, leave it alone, extend extend the arms. When you're doing this lesson at, at home, uh, you can always pause the recording if you want to do more, more, more um, the repetitions of the of the movement, but just for the purposes of the video, I'm keeping the repetitions fairly short. Now, um, pause. Bring the legs back to standing. Let the left knee drift out to the side. Bring the right foot to rest on the lower leg. Again, somewhere as close to the knee as you can, but not on the knee. And then interlace the hands once more. Take them overhead and begin to gently push into the foot to create a twist effectively. So thinking of the knee staying towards the ceiling, the thigh lengthening away from you. And I, I find I have to pull in the tummy on the, on the left hand side in particular to help create this push through the spine as you extend the arms. So just gently pushing get this sense of lengthening through the arms and now I can feel of course it's the more the ribs on the left hand side the push is affecting and a sense of it's e slightly easier for me to lengthen the left arm now on, on this side. Always as you're doing these movements again just check you're not holding the breath or clenching the jaw. And then once you've done a few repetitions, change the interlace, and then again just try, try to see, can you keep the knee looking towards the ceiling, a sense of the thigh lengthening away from you, pulling in the tummy as you extend the arms. And then leave it alone and take a, take a rest. So again, I can feel, it's a nice feeling for me because I have a habit of keeping my ribs slightly pushed up towards the ceiling. It's a lovely feeling to think, to feel the back beginning to release more fully down into the, into the floor. Now, bring your legs back to standing. And then take your arms um, in line with your shoulders. So palms are towards the, towards the ceiling. And then see, could you tilt your arms and your upper body to the, to the right and then come back to centre. 
So just notice when you begin your face, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your chin, everything is pointing up towards the ceiling. So you think of just sliding the shoulders and the chest to the right and the head to the right but not rolling the head so everything moves as a piece in the plane of the floor and then you come back. Rather annoyingly I've got this cabinet thing in the in the way so see what I could so I have to work around it. So you think of sliding your arms and your shoulders a little bit to the right keeping the head looking up towards the ceiling and then come back. So why, the key, if you keep the head looking towards the ceiling and you slide the chest to the right so your right arm begins to angle more down in the direction of the feet, it's a side bending action. So you're, if you, you'll feel the ribs on the right hand side shorten and the ribs on the left hand side shorten and then you come back to centre. Now, if you're finding that difficult to do, and many people in class did, the variation I taught was to interlace the hands, bring the palms behind the back of the head this time, so you bring the palms behind the back of the head, keep the elbows resting out to the side as much as possible, and then side bend in this way, so that I'm just carrying the head and the palms, as I slide the elbows, the shoulders and the chest to the right and, and then come back to centre. So many of my students found this a much more accessible variation to do. So I'm going to stay with this variation. But if you want to do it with the arms long, then please feel free to do so. So first of all, you side bend to the right and then come back to centre. Now pause tilt the right knee out to the side, bring the left foot to rest on the right lower leg in the way that we've been doing, and then as you gently press into the foot, side bend to the right, and then come back to centre. So gently press into the foot, side bend a little bit to the right, and then come back to centre. And then the next time you get or to the right, stay there, and then take the arms out in line with the shoulders, and then just try to press into the foot to roll the pelvis to the right and towards the right shoulder and let it come back down. So you press into the foot, and then you release, press into the foot, good, and then release and then pause, take, so I'm still side bent to the right, take your right arm up towards the ceiling. Now, uh, when I just check that your hand is, arm is straight up towards the ceiling, that it's not out to the side, and equally that it's not over the head, so it's directly up towards the ceiling. And then just try to, as if you're trying to touch the ceiling, and then lower the shoulder back down. So I try to touch the ceiling and then lower the shoulder down and, and try to keep the hand and the wrist soft, the elbow soft, so that the movement of reaching up towards the ceiling is happening from the shoulder and the chest. See, as I reach up, you can perhaps see this on the video, my ribs on the right hand side are coming together and I can feel therefore more weight pressing down into the left hand side of the chest. So I'm creating a twist, a twist in the upper chest. And then once you've got used to that, see if you can combine it with pressing into the foot and then release. So gently press into the foot as you extend the arm towards the ceiling and then release. It's, you'll feel, so it's not a big movement, but you're creating a twist. So it's, it's like a towel being wrung out, a wet towel being wrung out. The left side of the pelvis is going towards that right shoulder 
as the right shoulder is coming close to that left side of the pelvis. So see if you can allow the parts of the back that need to, to release down into the, into the floor. Good, and then once you've done that a few times, leave it alone and take a rest, but carefully and undo. Very unusual twist, which is part of why I love it, love it. <laughs> so um, just notice how that feels when you come back to lie. Notice the contact of the back into the floor. Again, I can feel uh, this lumbar curve beginning to get a little bit um, shorter, not quite as deep for me as I'm lying here. And then please bring your legs back to standing. Interlace the hands and bring them behind the back of the head. So you can do the extended arm version if you want to, but I'm going to stay with this variation because it worked quite well with my students. Keep the elbows out to the side and then just try side bending a few times to the left. Side bending a few times to the left and then you come back and then the then pause and then allow the left knee to drift out to the side bring the right foot to rest on the lower leg and try to side bend to the left as you press into the foot and then come back very challenging variation so so as you press press into the foot your side bending to the left and then the next time you are side bent to the left pause there take your arms out in line with the collarbone so my left arm is lower than the right right and then begin to just gently press into the foot a few times think of pulling in the tummy to send the movement towards those ribs on the left hand side so just here in my middle ribs I can feel them being pressed into the floor and then pause and extend your left arm towards the ceiling so again just to remind you straight up towards the ceiling so more in line with your breastbone try not to have it over the head out to the side so just straight up towards the ceiling and then just try a few times without pressing into the foot to lengthen the arm towards the ceiling. See, sometimes students try and the, the shoulder doesn't lift. Um, so it's really about allowing the ribs to soften, to soften. I can feel the lifting of the arm, creating movement in my sternum, my breastbone, breastbone to, and I can feel more weight coming into the thoracic part of the spine. So it's turning, the movement is turning gently that part of the spine to begin to bring the ribs on the other side a little bit closer to the floor. Now pause and then see if you can combine pressing into the foot as you extend the arm. So the right side of the pelvis is going up and over towards that left shoulder as the shoulder is moving towards that side of the pelvis. So again, it's a more complicated twist, which is always a good moment to make sure you're doing things slowly, carefully, without a lot of effort, reducing any unnecessary tension, trying not to hold the breath good. And then please pause once you've done enough, leave it alone and take a, take a rest. Just notice how that all feels, how the contact is into the floor. Okay, just roll the head a little bit from side to side. Good. And then pause, bring your legs back to standing again. Allow the right knee to drift out to the side as we've been doing. Bring the left foot to rest on that right lower leg somewhere near to the knee but not on the knee and with the left knee staying looking towards the ceiling 
and this time could you bring both arms up towards the ceiling so not interlace this time but in line with the shol shoulders palms facing each other again just check they're not over the head that you want to go straight up towards the ceiling and just try to lengthen both arms up towards the ceiling and then release so as the arms lengthen up I can feel as the ribs soften those middle ribs pressing down into the floor again and I can feel an arch developing in my cervical spine the back of the head just tilting back slightly as I extend the arms and then of course can you begin to combine this with pressing into the foot to roll the pelvis towards the right, towards that right shoulder, those right ribs. Okay. Easier to do this on an out breath, so when you breathe out, you can really allow the ribs to soften. And I'm hoping you can perhaps see this on the video. Again, it's these middle ribs, these ribs that often get very hard and protruded are beginning to release and soften down into the floor as I gently press into the foot. Good. And then please leave it alone, allow the legs to go long for a second, it's going to be a strong position for the hips there. And once you've rested, bring the legs back to standing, allow the left knee to drift out to the side, bring the right foot to rest on the left lower leg, in the way that we've been doing, take both arms up towards the ceiling again and then begin to extend the arms as you press into the into the foot. So I can I can feel if I, as I press into the foot thing of pulling the tummy in, it's actually um, my right arm lengthens a little bit more than my left arm because my ribs on the left hand side are really being asked to go down into the floor. So we're just really getting the spine, the trunk to twist and change from its usual, usual habit. So allowing the certain parts of the back to press down into the floor. Good. Now leave it alone and take a, take a rest. I think I might be getting taller. <laughs> so um, please, uh, once you've rested, bring both legs back to standing. Allow your right knee to fall out to the side again. Bring the left foot onto the right lower leg. And now, can you wrap your left arm um, uh, across yourself. So I'm trying to, with my left fingers, to try and I bring them underneath the right armpit to try and take hold of the le of the right shoulder, and then your right arm just crosses uh, over yourself. So both elbows are pointing up towards the ceiling. They're resting on the chest, and just try to use your arms, the left arm in particular to roll the trunk, the chest, a little bit to the left and then back. So allow the head and eyes to roll to the left too. So I'm just gently using the left arm to help pull my chest over to the left a little bit. And uh, looking to the left as well. And then as you be keep doing that, could you press into the foot to roll the pelvis to the right. Whoa, and it's such a, a powerful twist, this. So pelvis is going one way, upper part of the chest is going the other way. You can see, as I said in class, it's another great lesson to do for golfers, racket players, any kind of sports player, if you're just a uh, if you're a runner, even a walker, 
um, that this lovely differentiation in the spine, this twist travelling all the way through the spine. And so now let's increase the twist. So as the chest rolls to the left, the pelvis to the right, turn the head and eyes to the right too, as if you're looking over the right shoulder to the right. So the chest is going to the left, head and eyes and pelvis to the right. And if you wanted to really drive yourself crazy, you can have the eyes go to the left as the head goes to the right with the pelvis, but you don't have to do that variation with the eyes. Good. Excellent. Leave it alone and take a rest. Whoa. Definitely feeling lo more loose, freer in the in the ribs and the and the chest. Um, once you've rested, bring the legs back to standing. We need to do that on the other side. So allow the left knee to drift out to the side. Bring the right foot to rest on the left lower leg. Bring your right arm across yourself to try and tuck underneath the left armpit to try and take hold of that shoulder blade. The left arm crosses over yourself again. And first of all, just try without the push through the legs. I'm just trying to roll the chest a little bit to the right. You can maybe even think of reaching with your left hand to the floor over on the right to help that. Turn the head and eyes to the right too as you're doing this. And then see if you can begin to combine that movement with pressing into the foot. Still thinking of keeping the knee looking towards the ceiling, the thigh lengthening away from you. So I can feel as my, my middle to lower ribs on the left hand side are pressed into the floor, my turn in the chest is bringing my right ribs a little bit closer to the floor so that the upper ribs are doing something different from the lower ribs. And as you get used to this, then begin to turn the head and eyes to look to the left. As the chest is taken to the right, the head and eyes look to the left with the pelvis. Good. And breathe, breathe at the same time. Keep the jaw nice, nice and relaxed. Good. And then please pause once you've done enough variations. Leave it alone and take a, a good rest. And then roll the head and eyes a little bit from one side to the other. Good. And then please pause, bring both legs back to standing, so final variation now. And again, don't have the legs fully bent up, have the heels a little bit further away from you than you might normally do. And then begin again just to gently press the heels down to feel that helps you to roll the pelvis to 12 o'clock so the lower back comes closer to the floor. So you're creating this push again through the, through the spine. Once you've kind of established that, then interlace the hands once more. Turn the palms away from you. And then as you push into the, into the heels, extend the arms and then release. And now, as you continue to do this, begin to roll the head and eyes and the chest to the right, to look to the right hands, and then come back. So you, you push into the heels to create that push through the spine, and then you begin to allow the left shoulder, the chest, the arms to turn to the right, try and see the right hands and then you come back so that the, you feel the, the right arm is really beginning to lengthen on the floor and then come back. Okay, just a few more to allow the chest to turn, to turn as if you wanted to come and rest the, the head on the right arm and then come back. Such a nice movement. 
Once you've done a few of those, then change the interlace of course, bring the hands over the top of the head, start with bent arms, and now as you begin to press into the feet to bring the lower back, think of turning the arms as you extend them to the left, as if you wanted to see the left hand, so I'm not trying to lift the head, but I'm turning it to look towards the arms. So I, I push, push through the heels, try to turn the chest to see the arms. And my head comes off the mat, but I'm thinking of it resting on the left and upper arm. So of course you get this big opening, opening in the left armpit area, the left sho shoulder area, and then come back. So I push, push, and turn and look at towards the hands and then come back and then pause once you've explored that and allow the legs to go long. So just when you come to rest just um, uh, think about the line of the spine, those curves that we looked at at the beginning of the lesson. Just maybe notice notice how, how that feels. So the these twists that we've been doing, they're a great way, you see, if, as you twist, you then have to undo a great way of lengthening the curves of the spine to get the muscles to do something differently, the spine to do something, something differently. Um, so just notice the length that you're experiencing now from the top of the head to the heels and just roll the head and eyes a little bit from side to side. And then bend the knees when you're ready, roll to the side and uh, come up. Uh, my students in class this week absolutely love this lesson. Uh, you, you, if you've done it along with me, you'll see why it's such a great lesson for all sorts of pe people, sports people, people just looking to improve their movement generally. Um, I've included it in my Happy Hips series and this is the first lesson in a short sequence of lessons that get progressively more challenging in terms of their movements and this lesson really sets up the foundation for those uh, lessons to come in the weeks to head. I really hope you've enjoyed doing it. I'd love to hear how you got on, how you felt after the lesson, and I can't thank you enough for those people who have left comments in my previous videos. I really appreciate getting those messages. Stay safe, everybody. See you soon. Bye.